Welcome to Superchargers. I'm Daniel Thomas. Let's go. G'day guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My guest on this episode is Angela Beyer. Angela is a renowned personal trainer and health coach who helps people unlock their potential through a strong mindset, healthy lifestyle and physical vitality. She went from banking to competing in bodybuilding competitions where she earned some prestigious titles including Miss Florida, Miss USA and even Miss Universe. Angela shares a load of health and fitness insights from her journey. Enjoy this one, guys. Let's do it. Where did it begin for you? Did, did you migrate to the States from, from Germany? And, and what led you to, did you always have an interest in health and fitness? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes and no. Um, after college, I just gained a lot of weight. And then for me at the beginning, it was more the aesthetics, <laughs> mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, but you cannot create a, a good body without being healthy. So it goes hand in hand. And um, yeah, that's how I started. And I went through all kinds of different diets, painful, very, very isolated Um I had not a good support system. I had not um, the right tools at hand. And what happened was I ended up with major health issues and not the knowledge, to be honest with you. And uh, after that, well, ending up in the hospital, I said to myself, okay, this needs to change. And I got a nutrition degree. I wanted to learn everything about food and nutrition to fix my body. And this was the start of getting uh, into the health um, and fitness space. And I started working out and I got real good at it. Never did anything with it, to be honest. And um, again, if you don't live your authentic self, if you don't live um, the life you're supposed to live, um, you hit walls again and again and again, and one obstacle after the other. And I decided at one point, this needs to stop. I'm meant for more. I don't continue. I was a banker. So I just quit my job as a banker. I quit my relationship, broke up with my boyfriend, very abusive, not a healthy relationship at all. And I said, I need a time out to recover and heal. So I decided to go to the United States to learn English, English as a second language. So I was a student at a university for three months to learn English. And then um, from there, I fell in love with the country, wanted to stay. And I stopped at a bank and I asked for an internship just to stay. It was at the end of my um, English course. And guess what happens? This is not funny. I stayed in my comfort zone, decided to go back to banking because this is what I knew. This is what I my degree in, but it was not my authentic self. And again, when you're not doing what you're supposed to do, it doesn't work. And what happened to me was, um, yeah, my immigration lawyer said I can't can't continue uh, staying in the United States as a banker because there's so many bankers in the United States, I wouldn't get a work visa. So I'm like, okay, what are the other options? And she said, well, there are no other options. That's it. You You have to go back. And I said, well, there has to be a way. What other options are there? I said, well, only if you have some special skills, you can stay in the United States. I said, well, I don't have special skills in banking, but I'm really good at lifting things up and put them down. I'm really good at bodybuilding. And she's like, okay, if you're able to win a world champion title for the United States, you get a green card. That's classic. You'd think... You'd think they would have wanted the banker thing and, and, and the other way around. That's really, really classic that, um, mm -hmm. but like, you, like I can very much relate to what you're saying. It sounds like early on that the sort of the rug was pulled out from under you when those things started to, yeah. you know, that the, the relationship is on. And, and the more I chat to people, the more I realize we're far more alike than we are dif different. And as you say, when we're not aligned with mm -hmm. the things that we're meant to be doing, we just seem to, you know, we just keep hitting these walls, as you say, over and over and over. It just repeats itself. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's really interesting that, that, 
part of you that was trying to cling on to the safety was because I've done this myself. I was working in architecture and I had, I, I left it. I made a, you know, a sa same deal. I made a really big decision to leave it. But then I had these moments of panic where I would just go back to it. And every time I went back to it, it didn't work out. I just kept repeating, you know, that environment was not, was not made to me. Oh. So I could made for me so I can really relate to that yeah it's an interesting thing about fear um in my beginning like in my early 20s like let's put it that way I I misunderstood fear I had a bad relationship with fear and I felt that fear is a bad thing until I understood that fear is a good thing because it pulls me in a direction where it, I have a challenge and where I can grow and where I can better myself. And I started to do things with my fear, I, like having my fear in the backseat of the car and doing it anyway. And that's when my life started to change. Mm -hmm. That's awesome because, yeah, the inclination with fear is to kind of run from it. But if you actually lean into it, that's when the good stuff kind of yep, absolutely could happen. That's but happened to me. Yep. Yeah, uh, that that's that's very cool. So then so then you started competing professionally just to, to get that title. <laughs> yeah, well what happened was I um yeah, she said, Okay, that's the deal. I'm like, I'm getting ready for it. I had nothing to lose at that point. And something interesting happened. This is one example. I got into such a flow. My diet worked well, my exercise, everything fell into place. My body was changing. I was excited. And um, the first show I did was the Miss Florida in natural bodybuilding. I competed at the Miss Physique class. That was my class where I was starting in. And yeah, I won Miss Florida, got qualified for Team USA. I competed at the Miss USA. So you just continued your diet, your workout, you you tweak here and there you see how you get better and better and at the miss usa which was a big show um i was able to get the title as miss usa and that qualified me to compete at the miss universe show and i was able to represent the united states at the miss universe so that's how i got my green card and again i was in that flow state where everything it wasn't easy hmm. but it was in a flow. It was just all falling into the right place. It was coming together nicely. The obstacles weren't there. I didn't hit a wall. It wasn't easy though. It was hard. And we need to understand what we have to do hard things. That doesn't change. We need to do hard things. Life is hard. <laughs> No matter where you look, it's it's hard. So just pick your heart. And mm. I pick that. And um, this journey brought me to the Miss Universe title. I was able to win Miss Universe for the United States, which was such an honor for me and a big, big moment. And I remember standing on stage, holding on to that trophy, looking into the audience. And uh, I remember that feeling, that moment. And I felt relief. It was not the happiest moment in my life. Mm. I felt relieved in that moment. The happiest was the journey, this whole process of doing it. That was the best time. Yeah, with relief at the end. Yeah, it's a different kind of hard, right? It's like you say, it's that which hard do you choose? But when things are aligned again, you know, you get those, suddenly you get those um, markers or those signposts that like these victories that are saying, hey, keep, Keep going yep. this way. Like Absolutely. don't run the other, don't run back the other way, the banking way, mm -hmm. like keep, keep. And then even when those little things happen, we can still, that, that might confront us, you know, in a, in a different way, you know, whether we deserve that or things like that can come into play. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was also during that time. I think no matter what would have happened, how hard it was, um, I, I, I just, kept going like there was this inner desire to really see how far i can take this and um all those hard things weren't hard in that moment it's, mm. a, it's an interesting phenomenon when you think about it 
Mm -hmm. Because, oh my gosh, trust me, those workouts weren't easy. Those diets, they were very tight. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. But, no, I... um, it was the fun of it. Yeah. Mm, in the process, the journey of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working once for about a year right next to a, f a friend or a colleague who was preparing for a, a bodybuilding competition. So sitting, sitting next to him, I observed yeah. his routines and, and his dietary stuff. And, you know, I would ask him questions and I was just curious about it from like, you know, observing this. And, uh, to me, you know, as he was preparing for this competition, I just think it, it would take fierce discipline to do what you, what you do, um, on, on, on so many levels. And, and like you said earlier, you know, it's, I, I imagine even in the simple kind of fitness that I do, you know, the basic kind of daily gym and stuff, um, there's so this it's so it's so complex in terms of the nutrition and the balance of it all and like you said when you first started you were getting things wrong um it's kind of hard. where where does somebody begin with this whole kind of process yeah very good question um now see there is what happened to me during that journey and now what i'm doing is um more health related at the beginning, like I said, I looked more at the aesthetic. It was all about the look. And now it's more about health span. So I'm talking to people who are interested in having a long, healthy life. And the aesthetics come with it. You are getting an ideal body composition. You are getting rid of the visceral fat, the body fat you want to get rid of. That just comes with it. So if somebody wants to start out, I always recommend to take small steps because when we talk about um, health and muscle building and healthy muscle, I'm not talking so much about size, so to speak. I talk about the tissue, the cells need to be healthy in order to get everything else you want to accomplish. And um, the workouts don't need to be very long. I want you to start with a whole body workout. You want to train every muscle. You want to feel what you're working. You need to create a muscle-mind connection. There are neural pathways. They have to be established first. So by practicing that, and sometimes it can take months. I have clients, I work with them for months before they have the correct form, before they have it down. And then we increase the weight. And same with diet, everybody is very different. And I like to take small steps and get people slowly into a right diet regime or planning or schedule or routines. Um, because depending on what, what's going on with that person, if you're dealing with sugar addictions, if you're dealing with some emotional stuff related to food, if you're dealing with some certain health issues where I have to be cautious about. So small steps and taking it day by day is super important. That balance thing is challenging. I know you primarily work with, with women, but as a dude, it's like, chest arms ignore the legs <laughs> it's just uh -huh. but, yeah, oh but, yeah like just chest arms but then it's like i you know i fully understand that the muscles have to work in unity and that you know the harmony of it how can how can one muscle develop if another one is lacking you know i, I guess ideally you want them in sync and balance yeah, the thing is the body wants to be in balance and as soon as you get off balance something will be injured <laughs> So something will give and, and you, you want to avoid injury at any cost. That's why we're doing this. You want to have a healthy, strong body. And um, again, what are we talking about? Is it aesthetics that we say, okay, I have a six pack or is it like, okay, I mean, just a number. I, I looked it up for the United States. Um, the average lifespan, how long a person lives in the United States is 79 years. The average health span, how long a person is healthy, is 63. So you have 16 years of a gap 
meaning where this person is not able to take care of themselves, enjoy life, travel, do the things they like to do, play with the grandkids, being independent, it's gone. So um, I think we need to build a bridge where we close that gap. And the take on is most of the time the wrong way as well. Um, we are so focused on body fat. Mm. We want to get rid of the body fat, the scale, the number on the scale. It, it's such, um, well, it's what the society tells us. This is what we need to weigh. This is the body fat. That's what we can measure right now. It's very interesting too. It's the measurement tool we do, body fat percentage. Uh, but nobody looks at the muscle. And um, the muscle is actually the key to to get healthy. And why is that? Um, think about it. If something goes on with you, the or let's say metabolically, like you're you said, oh my God, in my 20s, I was able to eat whatever I wanted. Mm. Now I'm in my 40s. And boy, I just look at the stuff and I gain the weight. What's happening? What's going on? I mean, don't we all like feel that way? What happened is that the muscle, the cell of the muscle is either we don't have enough of them. We don't have enough muscle mass or um, the cell is not healthy anymore. It's a fatty muscle. It's a muscle what is not being used. So think about it. You eat the carbs. It goes into your system. It gets into your bloodstream as glucose, right? Blood sugar. So then the pancreas gets the signal to produce insulin. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Insulin is basically the key what opens up the cells. So the sugar can get out of the bloodstream and into the cell. And muscle is the biggest glucose disposal in our body. Think about it. That's the key where we can say, okay, this is how I fix my metabolism. I need healthy muscle to get the glucose out. Well, if the key is not working, if the muscle is unhealthy or not enough, we keep the glucose in our bloodstream and that's a big problem. Now we have too much sugar in our bloodstream and it hits the liver. When it hits the liver, it spills over and the liver creates visceral fat. And that's the dangerous fat where it causes a ton of health issues which we want to avoid. So that's number one. Also, if you have healthy muscle, just think about it too. You have to carry it and you need healthy bones to carry that muscle mass. So for example, for women in menopause, they lose a third, like by just by dropping the hormone, they lose a third of their bone density in that time, which is a huge amount. Men are more linear it goes slowly down. So they don't have that much of an issue with it. Later down the road, they can. But women, they feel it immediately. It's um, with men, also with hormone-related issues, it starts more in the 60s because it goes slower and more evenly. Mm. And women have more of those drops. So that's that. Um, yeah, the muscle communicates with the immune system. You just have a faster and more robust immune system. As I mentioned, it communicates with your endocrine system. All your hormones regulation is related to muscle. If you have healthy muscle tissue, it regulates that as well. And then, of course, cognitive function, way better brain function if you have healthy muscle tissue. And mindset as well. It's an interesting thing. The stronger you are, the better your decision making is, the better your mindset is. It goes hand in hand as well because you do hard things daily. That's a mindset practice, so to speak. So you see all the benefits what a muscle can do to you and you can fix that with very little expense and very little time effort, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I like that... Uh... The muscle strength is sort of the foundation that knocks every knocks onto everything else. And I think I've, you know, just to use my own kind of silly examples is I've, I've said to myself, oh, or out loud, even, oh, I have a sluggish metabolism, you know, I'm not, res I'm not responding is my, but I guess that's a misconception in turn, you can change your ma metabolism, like you're saying. And I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure if I have a sluggish metabolism I'm, I'm just assuming that you know um yeah. i guess it depends how hard i push in a in a 
in a session or something like that. But what what are some of the do you get do you, with your clients? Do you get these sort of common obstacles or misconceptions about what they oh, believe absolutely. about their own bodies and things? Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, the sad part is a lot of my clients they are insulin resistant, and actually at a young age, meaning um, the body can't handle carbs anymore. And that's what I'm saying. The muscle is so not being used that we have um, insulin resistancy. And that's pre-diabetic and diabetic, like the next steps. Um, another misconception, I think that's funny, that's more like women related is um, if I lift heavy weights, I get bulky. Mm. And trust me, you have to lift a lot, a lot of weight to get bulky. And I'm talking about muscle quality. I don't talk about muscle size. Like I said, you have to lift a lot of weight. And of course, the strength training is, is a foundation, but it also is very important how your nutrition is. Like it goes hand in hand. Mm. Yeah, it's, you can't have one without the other. Um, they're crucial to each other. Yep. So the, the carb, the body can actually get to a point where it's just, it's the, the carbs are affecting the insulin. The, the, the carbs, well, you're, the thing is, you're having too many carbs or highly processed carbs, what hit the system way too fast and the blood sugar spike is too high and then you produce insulin to balance that out and the insulin production is like constantly and a lot. So the pancreas gets exhausted mm. and at no point gives up. So this is... Um, all long-term effects that later on when it's funny they start in the 20s now with having all those up and downs and swings and you will feel it in your 30s and 40s because you're damaging your system you can't work properly so um the carp intake is a big thing and um i always say you have to earn your carbs if you're not moving don't put fuel in the gas tank if you're not driving a car don't fill it up. Very simple. So that's that's what it is with carbs. And um, of course, what kind of carbs? Mm -hmm. Does the insulin spike, is that what can cause like a crash in the afternoon? Like you suddenly get tired in the afternoon. That's so, what it is. So if, if you're thing. filling the tank and then you're getting that insulin spike, but you're not. Um, Correct. Yeah. So when the insulin kicks in, you're tanking. And that could be any time after meals, you're getting tired. You just had breakfast at cereal with some orange juice. And that's like the killer. Mm. <laughs> you do not want that because it's highly carb loaded, very high in sugar. You have that spike. Usually you mix it a little bit with coffee. So you have the caffeine with it as well. And then at 10 or 11, you tank because the insulin production is too much. And then the dr blood sugar level drops too low. And then you're going back to looking for something sugary, you know, and then you're on that roller coaster and you're creating actually a sugar addiction by doing that. Mm. What happens with the insulin during the night? Does that spy, does that drop? Can that go low at night uh, or like um, in a resting okay. phase? So the, the blood sugar can go low. Blood sugar. I mean, yeah, sorry, not insulin. The blood, blood sugar could drop at night, but it, it, so then would somebody's response be, well, I need to eat sugar before I go to sleep to stop the blood sugar? No. No. See, okay. that's... <laughs> just, just a number. Um, in your body, in your bloodstream, the blood sugar level, the number you're getting when you're fasting, um, that is a teaspoon of sugar in the whole body. That mm. would be the amount of sugar what's needed in your bloodstream, very low. And the body can release sugar all the time because we store it in the muscle and in the liver so it's not urgent <laughs> we are not <laughs> you, we don't have to eat you, sugar you don't need to top it up it's it's there no we have it safely stored <laughs> and yeah and, and excuse me for my naive questions but like uh no, 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 I love those the, yeah the science of it um is, is i've heard of you know cortisol belly fat from from too much adre mm -hmm. adrenal um you know, fatigue. the adrenal, ad, adrenal fatigue, this is, that's a thing, right? Is that, so is that a different, that's, 
that's the fat being produced in a different way from like stress, stress mechanisms kick, kicking in. Is that correct? Correct. So um, cortisol is, is, um, <laughs> has a bad reputation, but cortisol is very important. The cortisol should be high in the morning and that's what makes us wake up. So if we don't have a high cortisol in the morning, um, we are having trouble even getting out of bed. Now, we don't want cortisol high later in the day. We want the melatonin production to kick in to sleep well. If you want to know if you have uh, adrenal fatigue or if your cortisol levels are off, I always recommend a 12-hour test. It's saliva testing during the day. And you need to have all those numbers. If you take a, a snapshot of one moment, and it's usually early in the morning, empty stomach, where we take blood tests, cortisol is always high. So if um, that's a fast decision making, if you say, oh my gosh, my cortisol is high, I have adrenal fatigue, um, because you measured it in the morning. So that's not quite correct. So I always recommend a long-term testing if you think you have that going on. Now, with cortisol, and this is such an important hormone, and um, it help, or it makes you gain visceral fat because what happens is you have um, your nervous system works in the parasympathetic and in the sympathetic nerve system. The sympathetic nerve system is the fight or flight mode. Parasympathetic nerve system is the rest and digest mode. And it's very important to manage your stress levels to keep the cortisol in the right wave flowing the the going up and down should be dialed in with your circadian rhythm should be dialed in with your meals should be dialed in with your sleep cycle and um, when that is correct um, the cortisol does not cause um, weight gain if you are stressed and if you are eating in a stressed state, for example, and this is just a little thing, think about it. If you gulp it down, don't chew enough, don't even realize what you just ate and go, 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 go. The body doesn't even produce um, digestive juice to digest the meal. It sits there, sits way too long in your digestion and the body doesn't digested properly so the whole microbiome is interrupted and the absorption of the food is interrupted and that can cause weight gain absolutely and inflammation if you're inflamed again guess what happens you're more insulin resistant you're having a hard time absorbing carbs it's the full so circle goes, yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. now that that's that's fascinating um as as you might know, or you would know from from your background, saunas are big in Germany, um, mm -hmm. and I was having a lot of, I was having a few saunas be, be, be through the winter because being an Australian, I like to sit in the sauna and try and imagine that I'm actually in like, <laughs> you know, through the brutal winter here. Yep. I, I don't. I don't. Can, can saunas increase? I know how. I know you, you read about all the benef benefits of sauna, and I don't know how how much you're up on this, but can, could a sauna increase inflammation in the body or this fight or flight response? Um, okay. You actually want the heat exposure to stress the body. Mm. So, but that's a good stressor. So the healing can kick in. So um, there are different forms of saunas. And um, to be honest with you, the infrared sauna is the most gentle sauna now, if you want to improve, let's say, um, your immune system, you have to have a higher heat exposure. And that's when you want the, the higher saunas, like where you get way the like finish. Yes. Finish yeah. Sauna. yeah I'm, I'm sort of a sucker for punishment in that way. I want the like real hot, hot, but then I was a little bit concerned that perhaps it was in causing inflammation if I was pushing too hard. I know you. I know no. you should only do a short amount of time. But... Correct. I just want to say it's the timing. Mm. It's the timing. Um, never ever go higher. Uh, if you want any benefits, never stay longer than thirty minutes in a sauna. That's more than tops. I wouldn't even go less. 
And um, I like the sauna, for example, for recovery after a workout uh, because it dilates the veins. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. So it increases the can, blood flow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, that's, I'm a big fan of heat exposure and I think it is a better stressor than cold exposure. Uh, okay. And cold exposure is um, way more stressful and can cause more harm than heat exposure. Mm. I see it in women, like for women, um, they get more benefits out of sauna than cold exposure. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's. Because yeah. the cold plunging is a huge thing. Mm. No, no. I was... never put it, you know, like after a workout, never, ever, always separate times because um, it restricts the veins, you know. Yeah, so I had. I I did a silly thing here. I went in a very, very hot sauna and then I jumped straight in an extremely cold. Uh, and it was sort of, I didn't, it was too extreme. Um, and it's I, not I benefit, oh, how can I say it's not beneficial for the heart? Yeah. yeah like it stresses you a lot. I, I think it's stress. I had to take a lie down for it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yep. No, that's fascinating. But so these these routines that you're talking about and getting getting people into this mode, I guess it gets to a a stage where your clients and, and people start to just get into these routines more without kind of question questioning questioning them. And I guess that's a big part of it. It's you know, I've heard the thing about put the stuff out for the gym the night before so that you don't have to think about when when you I mean, you've got a, a obviously your workout set up at your mm -hmm. home i, I assume yeah. <laughs> which yeah, is all my living room <laughs> yeah which is awesome and i have no excuse because the gym is it's a 30 second walk it's across the road oh yeah um, no <laughs> but we can we can talk ourselves out of these mm -hmm. things and yeah. this showing showing up up aspect can be tough so with with your with your clients you, you know getting them into these routines so that they do do i guess to get to my point, do you do you know what you're gonna do before the workout or you decide on the fly, like when you're there? Um, okay, I never do anything on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> I have everything systemized. Um, yeah. Um, I like okay, what I like to do is create routines and habit stacks. And the habit stack, so to speak, um gives you cues what to do when this happens. For example, in general, if people go into the bathroom and get ready for the night, they automatically grab their toothbrush, then they wash their face, then they brush their hair. They have a routine, what they automatically do when they do their nightly routine before they go to bed. It's it's written, like it's set in stone and they don't change it a thing. And I want uh, my clients to develop the same habit stacks with the workout so schedule it in a time where it's easy for you in what fits in your lifestyle don't say oh everybody works out in the morning well you're not a morning person it's never gonna happen so if you like it after work at five well then schedule it in there so you go after work to the gym you finish your day off you come home and then you, you're done you know, if this is a fit, it's a fit. So it's very important to look at the lifestyle and to make it work for you and create habit stacks. What I like too is being prepared. So I put it actually a little bit, not only preparing the gym bag and have it ready and grab and go and do the same thing with the diet. Um, journaling is a big thing, but I don't like my clients to actually journal what they ate. I want them to write down what they're going to eat mm. the next day, prep it, opposite. Mm. Because first of all, it gives you peace of mind. You know exactly what you're going to do. You have no food worries and you stay on track. And that's a big thing with any of it being consistent. Consistency for sure. Yeah, that that's that's a big thing because if, if you're just trying to track what you've already eat and that's where they call them the mistakes or whatever can have happened but that forward forward thinking stops those mm -hmm. those happening and the habit stacking is awesome i've tried i've done this as well because if you have something already in place 
that you just do and you don't have to think about it and it's set in stone, like you said, you can then easily just put something small on on top of that because the routine's already in place. So it's a it's a right. really good approach. What happens is and this is <laughs> um we talk so much about willpower and why do people um like have the willpower and others don't and why is everybody like so different or successful or not successful? And um, it's an interesting thing with willpower. And that's why I like to create those habit stacks like you just mentioned. When we wake up, I can guarantee you in the morning, everybody nails their breakfast perfectly. The healthiest breakfast you can eat. And if the day goes on and they have nothing planned, nothing prepared, and they're answering emails, phone calls, they're in traffic, they're in meetings, they're at work, they're opening their mail, they're getting calls from their kids, from their wives, husbands. Like there's so many decisions they are going to make during the day that the willpower gets always tapped into every time they do something like that. So by the end of the day, there's no more willpower left. You zapped yourself from the willpower, it's gone. So you come home, you have nothing prepared, and you're at that state where whatever's in the fridge, you will eat it because the willpower is gone. And there is literally a willpower gap later in the day. And that's where it's critical to be prepared and in order to be successful. Yeah. And the less, the less decision making, the better, really, the more, as in, yeah. I mean, you're going to, life is decisions, but like the more you can kind of flag those and be on top of them to avoid yeah. having to make so many. Um, mm -hmm. it's cool. We, we've touched on a few things, the habit stacking, um, nutritional things. Is there a, is there a daily practice or a challenge that you would throw down or, or offer from your own experience to can, can be anything really not, not, not necessarily strength training or nutrition, but something that has benefited you. Um, a daily, okay. Yeah. I started actually journaling a long time ago and with journaling, um, I incorporated, this is funny. It, it, it started out with just writing down, how, down how my day was and where the hiccups were to identify what can I improve in the day. So I wrote at night, just how my day went. Now I have in the morning, a gratitude book where I actually write gratitude because it sets the tone for the day, makes a big, big difference. And um, I have at night my journal and I have a food journal. By writing it down, and this is important, writing it down by pen and paper, not in your phone, not, I mean, if, some people just love it to track on the phone, but there is something about writing it, what, gives you a deeper connection to what's happening and a better memory of what's going on. And you connect the dots with your emotions and with the facts much, much better. And um, it's very, very powerful. And that changes everything. So um, I recommend to just literally have a book and writing it in a book and having some time where you take time. It's like a self-care plan where you do a short meditation or a short breathing exercise and really ground yourself and get ready for the day. Like have a moment just by yourself and no distraction and just listen to your body and check in. A check-in is so important. That makes a difference how you go through the day. It comes up on the show a lot, actually, the gratitude and the, um, which, you know, which proves that it just, that just taking that moment, like it really can shift your, mm -hmm. it just, even in a minute, if you do it for a minute, can really put you on a different, yeah. set you in different motion for the day. Again, we're shifting from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic mm. nervous system. It's yeah. grounding. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the call it the call it auditing as well has come up a lot, which is, you know, reflecting on the things that went well and things that mm -hmm. this tracking and systems and routine, it could sound a little bit uh, rigid or mundane, but I know how beneficial it is to, to have these things in place when you're 
Yeah. Because then you can track you can track the things that are working and what aren't and what you need to work on. And, and not in some grandiose thing, you know, just like, oh, next week, maybe try it a little a little different. And by this kind of auditing and tracking and systems, you have a hold of all this stuff. You have control of it. Yeah. And you know what I see? And this is funny. You mentioned it's rigid and a lot of work. I hear that too. Oh my gosh, so much work. What it does when you start doing it, um, you develop such a freedom because the thoughts, like let's say you write a food journal, ah, oh, so much work. Well, but writing it down and preparing it gives you all the freedom to do all the other things and you don't have to think about food. And some people are so consumed mm. what they're going to eat for lunch that they start thinking about it at 10 o'clock. They don't even notice it. That's another exercise, just writing down how often do you think about food? And the same thing is um, with any tasks, if you plan them and prepare them, it gives you more time and more freedom. You're way more present in the moment and you're not as anxious of what's going to happen because you're prepared. So, oh my gosh, it's a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. massively. No, it gives it gives you the freedom and and when you know you've when you know you've focused in those set times, then when when you're in the call it the free time, you can be more present, like you say. I used to let things just blend, especially as a creative. Things would just blend into one another and it was actually when I realized that my son was struggling to grasp when I was working and when I wasn't. So like on a weekend, he'd be like, Papa, are you working or are you not working? And he, I, when I saw that he couldn't get his head around it, yeah. I was like, wow, I really need to like rein this in and, and for, so that I can be a present father as best I can be. And yeah. it's really benefited me. So when I was really clear about these blocks of times and these yeah. systems, like you say, it gave me the freedom to be present and he was very clear. Okay. Papa's not working now, you know, so it's just rather than this snowballing effect of, of, you know, one it's thing. Though, and it's very mm. stressful and it is stressful for your family or friends, you know, I mean, yeah. And isn't that so precious? Those moments, this is quality of life, you know, creating memories. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. It's time's the most precious commodity. Uh, I'm just curious. Is there a, is there a, maybe a, a movie or some music or a series that has had a profound impact on you or perhaps a film that is an accurate representation of this fitness world or just even like a favorite favorite movie or book or anything? Hmm. I mean, I read a lot, a lot of books, a lot of books. But um, when I think about it, <laughs> this is funny, but I love all the superhero movies. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love Marvel. I love DC. I love them all. Yeah, I do love superhero movies. <laughs> That's awesome because they get a bit of bit of criticism sometimes. But yeah, they're like I know. comic book. I know. No, but they, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's where I'm at. <laughs> Star Wars. Oh my God! Remember Star Wars? That's another big one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Where the good wins and the evil loses. <laughs> yes, a lot of <laughs> a lot of messages in it. Um. Yeah. Uh, where can, um, I, uh, you've also talked to just, I mean, yeah, all this stuff's, all this stuff's just going to help increase your energy, right? Like it's just going to give you a better, better focus, better, better Absolutely. energy. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately longevity. Yes, absolutely. And this is so important nowadays and we have to be our like, yeah, advocate for ourselves, mm. you know, and just, uh, rely on can say the system or others um nobody will help you you have to know what you're doing you have to um take care of yourself and i think it's very important to have a self-care plan in place all those uh most of my clients they make a lot a lot of money they accumulated a lot of wealth and they have a retirement plan and a, a business plan and wealth management plan and God knows only what, but no self-care plan. Mm. And this is detrimental because what all does it, what all good does it do if you are not having your health, you know? That's the contra, yeah, it's the massive contradiction of a lot of wealthy people whose health is suffering because they're just yeah. doing endless hours and the body's suffering it. 
it yep. defeat def- ultimately defeats the purpose health health has got to be number yep. one sometimes Thanks. you have to yeah, and you have to fight sometimes to be your own advocate for your own yes. self self care. You got to fight for yeah. it, you know, because it's very yeah. easy, very easy for people to kind of hijack your time or you know. So you really got to like guard yeah. it with a sword, you know. Yep, that's right, and I'm supporting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, um, where can people find you? And you have um, uh, the ha- the House of Shape. That is that your. Sorry, yeah. have I said that wrong? No, House of Shape. No, yes. House of Shape. That's my business. Yes. Yeah, that's your business. Um, where where can people find that and 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 you? Yeah, so houseofshape.com. Um, that's where I welcome anybody with any shape, <laughs> and we get you in shape. <laughs> and um, yeah, in Instagram and uh, Facebook, it's Health Coach Angela. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate your time. We've covered quite a lot there with my, uh, my, my science, <laughs> scientific questions. <laughs> Semi No, very good questions. Yes. I appreciate that. Um, is there any, anything we haven't covered, like maybe just for somebody who's struggling for somebody who's like struggling to put one foot in the, in front of the other? Mm-hmm. Um, well, if, don't give up and start today. Today's the best day. Don't wait. There is no age limitation. There is no limitation at all. If you want to get healthy, just start. Don't wait for the perfect moment because the perfect moment is now. Absolutely. Good way to finish. Um, Yeah, awesome, awesome chatting to you, Angela. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much for having me. There you go, guys. Honest ratings for the show on Apple are appreciated. If you have a guest suggestion, please feel free to reach out on my website at danielthomas.co. I'm also on social media at Mr. Dan Thomas. Catch you on the next episode.